Hi, this is Mike from the Maine Primitive Skills School. This morning we're going to be at a high school in Vermont where we're going to be taking kids through our invisible school technologies. Uh, with this video, specifically I want to share with you a journey around the eight shields or eight directions model, starting in the archetypical east, the beginning of this uh, eight directions model, which is high energy activities. We'll move into the south, which is focusability, and then we'll bring them through a wandering transition in the southwest to community building, and hopefully we'll have enough time today to end up in the north, which is wisdom and reflection. Uh, my name is Dylan Bate, and uh, I'm a high school teacher here in Green Mountain in Chester, Vermont. And uh, with Alan Garvin, we teach a wilderness studies class where we read about um, wilderness and primitive skills, and we go out into the woods behind the school and teach them to the kids. So teaching students primitive skills in a school setting we have found to be very beneficial. Um, you know, first of all, it, it gets them outdoors, changes their the pacing, so that they can focus in on skills and um, activities that they can learn from. Um, and I think, you know, it teaches them how to work together in groups. It teaches them how to work independently. Um, their clear goals. You know, so many times in school that the goals are abstract. You're reading a book or you're doing math for some future career that doesn't seem present. But when you take kids out into the woods to learn primitive skills, the goals are so clearly felt, so concrete. You know, are you going to, can you build a fire? Can you survive in a cold environment? Can you build a shelter? Um, all of these skills are, are things that make sense to anybody from any walk of life. We can understand the value of it immediately. And I think that's very satisfying for students. Um, and because of that, it's a great medium to teach perseverance and grit so that they can, um, they learn that by working hard, they can achieve success. Uh, I think that translates nicely when they get back into school too, academically. Like, it overflows. They feel more confident. They feel like they can, they know that they can hang, hang tough and get through difficult things um, and learn from that. They, uh, they know they can work with other people. Um, it calms them down and makes them practical. Really, it's hugely beneficial. Typically, but not always, the east direction, the archetype of high energy, is the first one we start up with to get people excited, to get the, their bodies moving around. Remember, the baseline is uh, sitting down and being told, kind of like what you're experiencing now watching this video. We want to get entire antenna arrays engaged in meeting, in this case, building a shelter, getting water boiling with a fire off the landscape in less than 45 minutes to save, uh, in this scenario, somebody who's been incapacitated and we're two to three days out in the wilderness. So one of the organic expressions of the invisible school is that there's a natural movement from high energy in the east towards focusability in the south. In this case, none of the groups got their water boiling because they had the water container on the side of the fire. This focusability is all about getting water to boil by moving their fire around their water container. You can see that the students are all kind of concentrating either on getting that container situated properly or going out and finding dry debris to burn little twigs that are high and dry and off the ground. I'm a guidance counselor in my day life and what I noticed after visiting Maine, we would go up as a family and learning the skills that I learned up there. Um, they've offered me a way to uh, hold the tension in this crazy world. I look at posts on Facebook day after day of of people saying awful things to one another or these really scary facts about uh, what's happening in the world and it almost feels like I can't I don't know how people live if they don't have primitive skills or these practices in their yeah. lives uh, because there's so much grief and there's so much pain um, out in not out in the world but uh, within the world um, it's been really helpful and healing for me to think of myself as being a part of something bigger and looking towards making connections with people and with um, the landscape has uh, really helped me feel hopeful and 
uh, understand my own truth and understand my own values and feel okay sharing those things with people. Uh, it's also practiced in a very real practical way. It has helped me uh, take my or the grief that I encounter every day and not have it build up in myself uh, and it allows me a way so that I don't carry it home to my kids. It allows me to uh, un be able to listen to my inner teacher and recognize beautiful things. Every day on the way to school, my sons and I look at the sky and say, oh my gosh, isn't that beautiful? Uh, or when the snow, one of my proudest moments is when the snow covers the landscape, my son said, oh mommy, it looks like we're driving on a wedding cake right now. Um, and just knowing that my kids have these skills in them too, uh, of, of my joyfulness, of my connections to uh, the goodness in the world, and, uh, and that I can live and survive and be connected to things in a really healthy way, uh, feels really good. In the Southwest, it's all about moving, traveling across the landscape, and also building an awareness of yourself in the context of your environment. One of the archetypes about Southwest energy is self-sustaining survival, right? So as we move out of our comfort zone and into new realms, we try to figure out how we fit into those realms. This game involves moving through the landscape, hiding, avoiding detection, and seeing how close you can get to other people before they're aware of you. All of these things pertain to interpersonal relationships, ecological relationships, and eventually becoming a caretaker of your own landscape. I think criminals, uh, primitive skills are uh, very important because it's kind of bringing you back to your roots. And it's what we did as a species before technology or anything that assisted us really came into play. So I, I think it really reconnects you with nature and um, kind of puts you in your mind at peace when you're in the primitive skills. Uh, aspect of things. Um, I think primitive skills are important to learn because the society we live in today is so far detached from what we've experienced in the past. I mean, we spent thousands of years evolving the wheel, weapons, hunting. It's what we know, and today it's texting people and no face to face interaction and not going out and appreciating what you have and the world and the beauty and like the natural things that we're given that we take for granted every day and primitive skills it's a tool for you but it's also a tool for your mind and for your soul to help you appreciate nature more out here they don't see what's happening they don't know how to do anything out here and it leads to this detachment from everything that's providing things for millions of people and for me it's important because I have to teach a bunch of younger people that I know who are counting on me to do it. And yeah, just the way that it offers this way for you to know things that other people don't generally know, and it's just fun. I, I think that, that primitive skills are important for three general reasons. So on the physical component, you know, there's a lot of people that are that are out in the woods and certainly knowing how to survive, it can be very beneficial. It can help keep you not only comfortable, but keep you safe. Um, on a sort of a spiritual or physical, philosophical aspect, um, primitive skills, I think, give people a lot of confidence. Um, there's a lot of things out here that are hard to do, but are very manageable, and they're, they're tangible areas of progress. Um, I think that it helps connect people with the landscape, and they can draw a lot of strength from that. Um, so on an emotional side, um, I 
think that that fisk or the primitive skills can just you know like the whole concept of good message and being a good human being is really really important in our society today a lot of the kids or and adults even for that matter spend their time glued to a computer or a cell phone and being out here in the, the open environment really helps detach that electronic bug from us um, and get back to who we are and what's important to us. Um, so our goals for our, our wilderness class are twofold. Um, number one is to have the kids develop an intimate relationship with nature. Um, the logic behind that is because if they understand nature or if they're familiar with it or have a relationship with nature, they're they're better equipped to deal with it in the future. Um, and they've made this connection and they can go out and enjoy it and use those resources. Um, one of our other goals for class is to create whole human beings and happy people. Um, our society right now is geared towards creating these electronic zombies that react to everything, whether it's reality TV or the news or whatever. And I think by teaching the primitive skills, it really helps ground the kids in what's real. And it gives them technologies and ways that they can deal with problems and issues they're having. Yeah, and there, there are so many issues that students come to school with. I, I think there's this illusion when you plan educational goals for a school that children will come in ready to be filled up with ideas that we give them. Um, and of course we all know that's not actually the, the, the truth, that kids come into school with all sorts of issues and problems and curiosities and interests that school isn't necessarily addressed. Um, and one of the things that I really like about the primitive skills we work with kids with is that they, they, they give kids the tools that they can, they can find space to answer those questions they have themselves that it helps them, gives them the tools to also function in a society that doesn't really seem to recognize them. Um, it gives them, you know, the perseverance and the autonomy to, to find their own path, uh, and hopefully a healthy one, one that they like. And one of the great things about our class, too, is, is we can, we have something to offer everyone. Um, we've had kids who are at risk of dropping out. We've had valedictorians in our class. Um, and, you know, it serves all types of people, and people get different things out of it. They get out of it what they need to get out of it. And it, it's a really, a, it's quite a reward for us yeah. when, you know, a kid comes back and, and says, hey, thanks for that, or you know what, I just did this thing, or I just went out and hiked the long trail, or I did this, or, you know, they can relate what we did in class to other aspects of hey, their life. Hey, you are a freshman, stand up. Tenth graders, stand up. You all 